Well, good morning, uh, everybody, and uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, the organizer, for, for this invitation. It's, a, it's an honor for me to speak in front of a group of people of uh, such expensive experience in, in image-guided surgery. I am here today to speak to you about uh, this uh, new kind of augmented reality navigation system that uh, we are using actually in our center in Lugano. I work in Switzerland, in the southern part of Switzerland. And uh, we developed this system uh, um, with, the, with the Philips uh, um, and we tested this system in percutaneous surgery in the last two years. We made a study in collaboration with the Professor Seekamp in Kiel, and uh, it's a pleasure for me today to show you the results of our prospective study using this new system. So let me start first uh, telling you that uh, this system now has uh, uh, FDA approval, so it's not uh, only CE marked, but is also approved by the FDA for clinical use. Um, I, I will start uh, talking about navigation, and I think uh, uh, we, we, have, we have seen today many kinds of uh, different uh, um, types of navigation, actually, that we are using in spinal surgery. Um, we are using the IRO navigation system since 2014, and the, uh, the OARM since 2008. So we use this uh, uh, navigation in every kind of surgery where we put screws and implants. Um, it's just to tell you that uh, we had problems like, like everyone with navigation. We think that navi infrared navigation systems are not uh, uh, perfect in many, in many situations and the problems are related to the surgical workflow. Uh, the first problem you see is the navigation camera, which is very often off site. And uh, uh, this is a problem that the line of sight of the camera may be obstructed by people. And this uh, is a, a source of uh, frustration for, for the surgeon in many, in many clinical situations. The second problem is related to the fact that whenever you want to, uh, uh, to use a 2D fluoroscopy, you want uh, real-time imaging. For example, you want to cement some screws or you want to put an expandable cage, you have to work into the gantry and, uh, and this is not easy. And the third problem is the array, the array that you have to put on the spinous process. Everybody knows that uh, this kind of array can move and uh, this uh, may um, lead to an inaccuracy of navigation system. And the fourth problem that we have experienced is that uh, the surgeon is very often uh, uh, distracted by the fact that uh, he has to deviate the line of sight from the surgical field to an external screen. So there are many uh, problems in the surgical workflow using spinal navigation. Well, this new system actually has been developed to uh, try to solve or to ameliorate the surgical workflow. Uh, this is a, a monitor-based augmented reality system. Actually, the surgeon um, control uh, this robotized CRM uh, manually by himself or herself. And uh, as you see here, the, the C-arm has uh, uh, optical cameras that are integrated into it. And the, the optical cameras are looking at the surgical field and augment actually the reality, project the, the real-time the real imaging of the surgical field onto a surgical screen that the surgeon is looking at. So the surgeon has in front of him or her the image of the surgical field and uh, the 3D navigation navigation. So the surgical workflow, we think, is, very, is much better than with traditional navigation. And I will show you some examples. I will show you the surgical workflow. So the system uses uh, skin markers that are uh, placed at the beginning of the procedure, so there is no need for an array on the spinous process. The, pa the patient is tracked by these uh, uh, skin adhesive markers that are seen by the optical cameras and the position of the patient actually is reconstructed at the beginning of the procedure. The patient is registered automatically as you do with the, uh, an ICT navigation. And then after the 3D acquisition, you may plan the position of the screw by yourself, uh, working on the, screen, on the screen remaining sterile. You can uh, um, very, very nicely plan the screw position with a very good actually image quality as you see on the upper right. Uh, then you place the screw, the seat, so there is one instrument, uh, which is a Jamshidi needle uh, that is actually tracked by, by the system, by the optical cameras uh, via these markers that are on the, on the shaft of the instrument. And then at the end of the procedure, you verify the position of the screws 
So you, you do another 3D acquisition and you can see on the lower right, uh, uh, the very nice image quality. We really had uh, experience with this system and we were uh, surprised by the image quality that you may get um, in many um, complex situations. So these are the difference between a 3D navigation system, infrared cameras, external screen, and uh, uh, this new system that use this uh, uh, CRM that is uh, integrated into the surgical workflow. So I will show you some data. Uh, these are uh, actually recent data from our prospective study. It's a multicentric study. Uh, we, we placed uh, actually screws from T2 to the sacrum and the primary objective of the study was to check uh, the accuracy of the screws. We used the, uh, the girls gland classification and uh, accuracy was defined as the proportion of screws that were grade zero or grade one, which means under a two millimeter error. The uh, secondary objectives were many. Uh, I will show you then some data. We uh, checked, uh, we, we analyzed the procedure time, the time for screw, which includes actually the time that you need not only for the placement of the screw, but also for the preparation and the planning of the trajectory. And then there is a third kind of uh, measurement, which is the screw placement, which is the effective time that we needed to place the screw, meaning to track the bone and needle, to align the needle and to place the K-wire. We then measured the radiation dose uh, for the patient, for the surgeon, and also the usability of the system with, via a score. Uh, this is the, the surgical workflow, the measurements that we did. It's a it's kind of complex slide, but just to show you that we not only measured the time of the procedure, but also the time needed to place the screw and the time needed to plan the screw and place the screw. We think that the planning is an important part of the procedure and it should be measured when you, when you compare different kinds of navigation system. So this is the, the, the workflow of the, of the study. We included 40 patients, uh, but the per protocol analysis uh, was on 39 patients. The majority of them were treated for uh, fractures, for spinal trauma. 30% uh, had uh, uh, previous spinal surgery. And you may see uh, that uh, a high proportion of screw were in the thoracic spine from T2 to T12. The accuracy we got was very good, 98% overall accuracy. And uh, for the lumbar spine, it was 99%. And for the thoracic spine, 95.6%. So this was very high accuracy. And uh, we had four screws that were misplaced. And uh, three of them were in the thoracic spine. All these four screws had an error between two and four uh, millimeter, meaning that we had no screw with an error over four millimeter in the study. Uh, most of the screws were, were grade zero, were meaning perfectly placed, either in the thoracic and the lumbar spine, 93% overall and 96% uh, uh, in the lumbar spine, uh, less in the thoracic spine, uh, where we had 10% of screws that had an error under two millimeter. So I will try now to compare there's our results with the, what is existing in the literature uh, with the uh, traditional 3D navigation, but especially with robotic. I will start with the 3D navigation. This is a comparison of our accuracy with the, the accuracy we got in a previous study with the uh, Aero mobile navigation. And you may see here that uh, the overall accuracy of the Clarify system was uh, better than with the, the Aero navigation system. And uh, what is uh, uh, good to see is that we didn't get any screw over four millimeter error. And uh, uh, by, with iron navigation, we, also, we have uh, some screws that were um, also highly misplaced. Uh, the comparison with robotics uh, uh, has been done and uh, I, I uh, didn't find many study that uh, use the robotic navigation for thoracic screws. You may see this is a comparison with the Mazor uh, robots. Uh, and uh, you can see here uh, on the upper right, the first study with the Mazor done in 2015. And uh, they uh, got in the lumbar spine 37% uh, of screws that were, uh, had an error under two millimeter, but also around 2% of screws with an error over um, four millimeter. 
On the lower right, a study made by Katzevman and published very recently in World Neurosurgery. And this is one of the few studies where they uh, analyzed ACRAS in the thoracic spine uh, using a meso robot. And uh, you can see here that uh, they got a nice overall accuracy, but 13% of screws were misplaced over two millimeter and 5.6% uh, over four millimeter. So uh, using a robot, you may get in the thoracic spine uh, misplaced screw. Very often these screw are uh, clinically uh, not relevant. Uh, you see here the comparison with the Excelsius uh, data. Uh, I didn't find any study that analyzed the accuracy of the Excelsius on the thoracic spine. So these two studies were made uh, uh, on the lumbar spine. And uh, uh, on the upper right, the study from Fayed, uh, two screws had an error over six millimeter. Uh, and the, on the lower right, a study from Young with 120 lumbar screws. But I didn't know uh, how many of these screws were placed uh, uh, percutaneously. The last study was from Wallace, a recent study. Uh, he's a very experienced uh, surgeon with Excelsius, 600 lumbar and sacral screws. Uh, two screws had an error over four millimeter. So these are very good data, but again, on the lumbar spine. So very few data available for the thoracic spine uh, with the robotic navigation. These are our secondary objectives. I uh, will try to get into these results uh, very quickly. I will not have time to show all the details. Uh, I will start uh, with the screw placement time. Uh, this is the time to place the screw, meaning to align the Jamshidi needle, to place the K wire, and to place the screw. And uh, with this time in our study was six minutes and 25 seconds. And uh, it, it, it compares favorably with what has been published with the other system, uh, and uh, we, especially with OARM and uh, uh, with the fluoroscopy. You may see here uh, the previous studies, and uh, the, this time was uh, between six minutes and 10 minutes. The radiation dose of the patient, this was very uh, surprisingly low. Uh, we got the patient radiation dose of uh, 11 uh, millisieverts. Uh, meaning a half uh, of the, do the dose that we measured with the iron navigation and 30% less of the dose than we measured with your arm. The, the surgeon radiation dose was also uh, uh, diminished, it was also uh, much less. Uh, we uh, measured with, via dosimeter placed um, under, um, actually over, sorry, uh, the uh, lead apron. And the, the, do, the overall dose that we got was uh, uh, 40 microsievert. And uh, we compared this with the previous study of, from Bindel, where they got uh, 270 microsievert using uh, uh, fluoroscopy, but uh, they placed the dosimeter under the lead apron. So compared to this study and to the literature, our dose was uh, uh, much less. So the conclusion of the study uh, were uh, that we got an overall accuracy of 98%, uh, four thoracic screws, 95.6. And I think uh, every robotic system in the thoracic spine um, has to be tested and uh, compared to what, is, uh, what we currently can do with the, uh, 3D navigation and with a uh, system like this one. We got many benefits of the device, so we were, um, uh, the benefits were many. First of all, the planning. You can really plan the, the trajectory of the screw as you do with the with robotic system. Uh, the image you get uh, during surgery is a very high quality image. And, uh, and uh, you, you have a real time optical and haptic feedback, which is very important, uh, especially in difficult anatomical situation. We uh, got the radiation dose that was less for patients and for surgeon compared with the 3D navigation with our previous data and also compared with the literature. And the uh, procedure time and screw placement time were, were comparable to uh, what we uh, experienced with the uh, traditional 3D navigation system and uh, to what is published uh, uh, in the literature. I will end uh, showing you the, the, the benefits of such a, such a hybrid room. Uh, I, I have to tell you that this system, of course, has to be 
installed in a, in a hybrid room with robotized CRM. So uh, in our experience, augmented reality was really an improvement of the surgical workflow. So we were able to ameliorate the surgical workflow and, do, and to solve many problems related to navigation. At the end, navigation uh, was simpler and, and faster. So we were very fast placing screws with augmented reality because we could check from the beginning the entry point and uh, quickly place the, the K wire um, in the pedicle with a very good accuracy. The advantages are, are of course related also to the hybrid room. Uh, working in a hybrid room is, uh, uh, is, uh, is really nice in my experience because you get a, a 2D uh, fluoroscopy whenever you want. You can, you can uh, you really uh, manipulate and, uh, and uh, uh, move the CRM uh, by yourself. You don't need any technician in the OR. And uh, you, you may have a 3D image also whenever you want. So the integration between 2D and 3D with such a system is very high. The planning is, uh, uh, is uh, very fast. You may plan that screw trajectories uh, remaining sterile in front of the screen. You have this big working screen in front of you, which is very good uh, to plan trajectory of the implants. And uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, we were very surprised, uh, uh, nicely surprised by uh, the radiation dose that we got uh, using this system. It was really uh, lower than what we got previously. So. Um, Thank you very much, and uh, I am available for every for every question. Thank you for your attention. Great talk, Pietro. Uh, I'm curious, your six minute per screw is. Do you think that that number could be decreased, or is that sort of was that the fastest you were going? Because some of the people in the room, I know that they're thinking their navigation per screw is about three minutes. Robotics now is about two minutes. Uh, I know that you're comparing to maybe some older data. Uh, can you comment on the, the time per screw? Yes, um, thank you for the question, of course. Um, well, again, uh, whenever you, you measure your, your, the, the real time you need um, uh, to place a screw, maybe you can be surprised by the fact that this time is not really what you think first. Second, uh, depends on, on the, where do you place the screw. In, in our study, we got uh, uh, difficult uh, uh, anatomical pedicles, very tiny pedicles in almost 10% of the screw that we placed. So, um, and the third reason is that, uh, uh, that there was a learning curve. So we were um, starting with this new system and at the beginning we were, we were slower, but going on, uh, we were able to um, lower this time. So I think this time of course can be, can be much less than six minutes and at the end, it will be uh, comparable to what uh, uh, you may obtain with the robot. Um, I, am, I think that again, the robot has to be um, uh, tested in the thoracic spine. Uh, I think in the thoracic spine, the situation may change. Um, so the existing data are related to, to the lumbar spine. Great, thank you so much. Um, and then, do we have any timeline on when this may be available in the United States? Well, uh, I, from what I know, um, it, it will be available very, very soon. I mean, uh, um, the system has been installed, uh, uh, it, it was installed first in, uh, in Stockholm and it was tested with an open surgery. Uh, now it's, it's in our hospital and they have uh, two uh, new um, installations in Europe. And I think very soon it will be available uh, in the United States for, for the clinical use. I know that it has, it has been uh, approved by the FDA um, recently.